hard to execute with, but saw a very impressive Elder Titan performance yesterday. Again, if memories. It's all four stomp. about those out? Bless Easy. Hey, speaking of apples, that bacon that we brined. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Was it good? I got to fix the uh, the brine recipe a little, a little heavy on the apple. But dude, pork belly, it just tastes so much better than regular bacon. I, I recommend it. You can get pork belly at Costco. Dude, DIY, I know you're into it. I'm good. 350 a pound. Now that's impressive. Okay, now now I'm into it. <laughs> Press the wifey with this new savings technique and you can get better bacon without nitrates. Oh, so good. It's so much better. Just wait, next time you're here, bud, I'll show you the ways. Four heroes from Clutch Gamers down bottom. And oh, they are gonna find one. It's the Elder Titan, Tim's. Might take an early tumble here. <laughs> when they save me? Oh, almost. <laughs> Not much the Elder Titan could do. All right, crafty start. Good stuff for the lead. Bonus gold. So uh, any weird lane matchups doesn't look like it. We'll get the uh, tiny versus the tide hunter. And we're basically just going to be giving a life sealer a good start and a tiny a good start. So a lot of it's going to come down to the infest ganks and the life sealer and then those earlier rotations from whatever mobility item is picked up by Raven. Um, a lot of the games, he picks up this blink and he doesn't get kills with it. He mostly just uses it to like keep ratting without dying. And every time I'm just kind of like, when are you going to get kills with your blink dagger? But then he picks up the uh, shadow blade and, and makes it work out. So... I don't know. I, I've been impressed, and every time I keep questioning him, and he makes it work, so... Don't be too surprised if he just picks up Blink Dagger and doesn't kill anyone for like three minutes. Okay. Man, it looks like they were going to try to set up. Dire just rotate all flares. Armel gets stunned up. Nice stun from the Sand King, and they might be able to find a kill here. Cuckoo with the Nightmare. Like... Very I mean, fire. Armel's still level one, so. By Armel. Mid lane matchup is brutal right now. Yeah, Armel is splitting destroyed. with Cuckoo. And now with Afro Moosh here. Serious threat. It makes you kind of wish Cuckoo went for the uh, Enfeeble level one. Yeah. Because, yeah, he's getting dumpstered. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. If you're going to split experience like this, you feel like you get so much more value out of that level one Enfeeble locked at level one. So much longer. And you don't have any follow-up with the Nightmare because your SF's level 1 and doesn't have raise. Yeah, exactly. Now, stun with the Burrow Strike. Sets up for Odd Jin. They might be able to get this kill on the Bane. It's a nice Dragon Slave. Nightmare will blow the Sand King down, but... Now on the way back in, Bane just teeth back to the mid. Shadow feet, at least getting a couple of last hits now. Stacking up those souls. Ajit getting low as Kuku presses forward, but another burrow strike. Dire pretty low on resources. And King's gonna have to walk back. Let's check out the top lane. And we've got the life stealer farming against the Elder Titan Nyx Assassin. Not a fun lane. So far, they've pretty much just left him alone. Eight and three go, so still well on last hits in this all melee showdown. Yeah, not uh, too difficult for him. He's gonna buy some more tangos. He knows what's coming. Just constant harass. He'll be okay though. Uh, Rubik is in behind here. Uh, another migrant here, Yoel, rotating in. Watch it, getting low, but there's the stun. Counter the other way. Yol from the low ground. Cuckoo does get finished off, and Armel might also go down. This wraparound from Rubik is pretty effective. Burrow strike available, and now the auto attacks will secure it. Big stuff from Clutch Gamers earlier. Yeah, it's kind of funny we're getting another one of these teams that is all just kind of like migrate linear, you know what I mean? Like uh, Yoel, Skylark, and I mean, even Afro Moosh is from Middle East, if I'm not mistaken. I think he was at that. Dubai thing I went to WESG. Oh really? Yeah, and he plays like a, a badass shadow fiend. He used to play mid. Huh. That's pretty interesting. 
Not, not a player that I was familiar with. Up top. Uh oh, Life Stealer gets hit by the stomp. A couple of right clicks. A couple of righties there, Trent. Not fully wrong. He's in, but what's he gonna do? <laughs> uh, get smacked around a little bit. And then knock at the kill and not cancel the south. So, no, I'm definitely thinking someone else. Aphromusha is just C Dota. Okay. My. Well, you sit. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. I'm right. He's from Jordan. Nice. Go me. <laughs> he you... was there. I got him. Done. On to the Nyx Assassin. Sam H does have a spiked carapace. Now the Elder Titan is back. Tim's giving him the club. Yol gets knocked down. There's the carapace as now Cuckoo rotates. Nightmare onto Sand King. He will have a burrow strike, but it's a good stun from the Nyx. Huge damage as he gets killed. TNC striking back hard. This Elder Titan doing some work. All right, your boy Tidehunter is having a real good game, though. It is so nice being this farmed on Tide. Super important for the hero, honestly. It's yeah. like a totally different hero. Like, there's the Poverty Tide that relies on the first Ravage going well to kind of get back in the game, and then there's the Tide that gets a decent lane matchup and can actually get into good items. Yeah. And those early items help him to farm a lot more. Yeah, Tiny is one of those heroes that, oh, oh Bane, he's going to be caught in the mid lane, stun follow up and they've got the damage to bring him down now Ajit on the run Afro moves with the, the counter south. stun they turn it again Shadow nice. Fiend gets killed and they can't even get the uh, return TP in there in time from Cuckoo so Ajit able to complete up a lot of that salve and back up to over half HP Cality. And they've got Aphromoosh also rotating out bottom. Has the Tranquils going, so there's a chance they could set up here. Raven is 6, though, with the status resistance, so could help him out. Run. Raven gets pulled back. One stun. Follow-up clicks, but he actually has the combo. Wants a kill of his own if he's destined for death. Heads through the tree line. Pops the stick. Trying to survive as long as he can, but that anchor will smash him in the face as Burrow strikes. He'll die or get another. Raven is punished. Four, seven. Very even game on our hand. Yeah, and they keep giving the kills to Skylark, which is nice, sir. Or at least they're able to give that one, uh, at the very least. So he's 1-0-1. One, one. Skylark can't get there in time with the bottle. Cuckoo even gets the Brain Sap off in fade time. Nice play. But uh, Tide looking for the uh, the phase boots next. So I guess he's going to skip the Soul Ring then if he's got the bottle. Makes sense of the lane he was in. And mid lane, they did use the Invis room to set up. Yeah, but now the follow-up on Shadow King. Stun after stun. Dragon Slave, Laguna, Cuckoo might be able to get oh, the return the kill with the Sal that actually saves him. And now sets up again. Tim's not able to find this kill. And another heartbreaking defeat as the Shadow Fiend gets juiced. Level four as the Lena is now well into level six. Ah, oh, Lena. I've been enjoying the Lena game so far. I feel like oh, she yeah. she doesn't feel crazy broken. She just feels like she's good in certain matchups and she's kind of risky. She's like Leshrac, you know? If you can go for this crazy early bloodstone, you can be rewarded for it. But if you end up getting killed a couple times and it, it feels like the worst mistake ever. Yeah, I mean, it's the same kind of logic why Shadow Fiend has fallen off where he's good but risky. He can die over and over like this. It just doesn't really offer much and now has to play poverty mode to start to recover. Lena has the power to bring this kind of burst damage, but can also be very punishable as he does with the momentum. Tidehunter still number one on net worth. Actually pretty impressive top lane. We'll see the life stealer set up on three on one. They will surround him. They will try to shower him with love. It's so overwhelming that he dies. Yeah, he is not having a good lane. Uh, you know, yeah, the Tidehunter's up there, but look where the Nyx Assassin is compared to the, uh, the Life Stealer versus the Tiny versus the Tidehunter. Like, all of that pressure top from Tim's certainly paying off to slow down this Life Stealer, and that might just force him into the Armlet build. We'll see. He's going to have phase in the, uh, the Blight, so maybe he might go the opposite way and say, okay, I just need Radiance to, like, get back into this game. Assassin initiated on. Ajit put into the Nightmare, but a lot of follow-up damage. There is a Laguna. Tims, the stomp, Sam H, follow-up stun. 
There it is. Pretty low, but it looks like the Radiant have the resources. Lena Falls and TNC turn this one around. Stomp on the Sand King. He'll get left behind, and they make it a two for other side. Yol getting stalked down. H hits him, misses the stun. <laughs> Tough. But, you know, the, the risks of the old Nyx Assassin. Yo, One thing man. that's uh, real nice for a Skylark this game is he didn't even have to skill up the uh, Kraken Shell. He just stopped at one point. Yeah. Doesn't help him against the cleave of the tiny anyway, and so he just has that additional damage for all these ganks. I also uh, like the cosmetics that Skylark is rocking. A lot of choices with your Tide Hunter these days. And he's Very important. Yeah. OG pirate flag, uh, uh, PI6 helmet that we were. Smart choices here. I, I it's not gold it. though, so who cares? Come on, but that's I appreciate the simplicity. Pirate flag is one of those. It's like the dreaded dreads on Witch Doctor. It costs five cents, but it's a great item. <laughs> Just like the pirate. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Faded is eyeing up the armlet for now. So, if uh, Aphromotion him can sync up with the Blink Dagger, maybe they can get some infest plays rolling. I mean, he needs it. That is one of the great things about the life stealer. You can behind like this and cover with infest gank plays. But Sam H has other plans. He says, "Guys, this is the weak one. Let's punish him until he fries." Raiden just scanned over that area, and it's going to be a false sense of security to Raven. Might die for it. Got three on the way. Double damage, Lena. Also, but they don't quite have the damage. Status resistant, helping things out. Held, meanwhile, top lane, Sam Mage. Rage, just by being there, so that's nice. Armel rotates top on the Shadow Feet. Big oh, rotation whoa. mid from the Dire. Yeah, they didn't get the kill with the DD, but they can certainly go into this tower with the help of the Catapult. Ajit just spreading himself so that he can keep going. He will become the turret, and Skylark will just tank it up. So his threshold's at 600, so he needs to be a little bit careful about getting low, right? So he doesn't have the max of Kraken Shell. Yep, but the tower goes down, Skylark gets the last hit, and up top, Armel able to finish off that tier 1 tower himself, and gets some bonus gold. Both teams creating towers, tier 1, bottom lane, now Life Stealer starting to pressure down here. And the rest of the Dyer rotating in. Doesn't look like the Radiant are too much in the way of moving resources. Might just sack this tower as they farm the enemy junk. Well, Sam H moving in once again. No sentries or detection at all on the uh, Dyer heroes here. And uh, Courier is coming by, but not going to get there in time. Old Shagbrack will get back safe and sound. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Speaking of classics, I mean Shagbrack most like one of the most iconic couriers i am using the shag bark hud right now dude. i mean shag bark's great big fan of the shag bark you, do you guys notice that you see these little plants over here you see this this is the official bark hud one of the classic i'm with it i'm hip I'm cool. you are hip dude it's hip to be square up to my hips and hip you got an invis rune on cuckoo here decent range of initiation here with the fiend script looking for afro -mush. But Eol's nearby. He's level 6, so doesn't want to give away a free Fiend's Grip. Yep. On the boarding expedition, Cuckoo. Yeah, he's... Hey, he already has a ward here, too, so... Also, just crazy in general. Pops the Fiend's Grip, sets it up for Tim's. The Earth Splitter will connect, and Lena bites the bullet. Skylark now battling Cuckoo, put inside of the Nightmare. Dark place. They'll get the ward, but still a very nice wrap there from Cuckoo. Yeah, pretty worth. Bottom lane. Sam H low on mana, but he's able to wand up and he's just baiting fate essentially and fades. Like, yeah, I know you're gonna vendetta. I'm not gonna waste my time. I need some last hits here. Drums Tyler. for Sam H. The old speed Nyx build. Quite a bit of fun. Here. 1400 gold, no blink dagger. He's just trying to farm. Up by the nightmare. Oh. 
That was nice. He's got his helm. Oh, to that save one, him. Yeah, was the helm creep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a nice play. And allies are rotating through, but there is a observer ward down here. That's one of those things that just feels good, you know, because you're you're gonna buy home of the dominator anyway. Certainly not for that reason, but it just yeah. counters Bane in those little situations and just makes you feel like you're getting extra value out of your tree. Well, that'll put us to 14 minutes. The Dyer will successfully scan that there are heroes in waiting here. So uh, Ajit's going to move himself back, and they're going to give the tower over to Armel. Raven went posture. Shadow Blade first item instead of Plank. Okay, good. I like, I like that better, generally. Slightly more combative opener here. They just destroy Skylark, but now the counter-initiation Cuckoo goes down just as quick. Shadow Fiend channels directly on then we have stolen, uh, oh. Stolen dead Rubik. He had the Fiend's grip, but yeah, he was surrounded by three heroes. He this no courier problem. and he gets it. It's Shack Sam back. H. Oh. That Vendetta okay. backstab, babe. All right, quick turnaround here from the Radiant side. Like that, TNC strike back and Armel. Talk about recovery. Ye olde Shadow Fiend. Yeah. Drums, and now the Dragon Lance. So he is the turret as well. Him and Lena just going to be trading some right clicking blows, but Ajit working in towards that Bloodstone does not come online quite as fast at this stage of the game. Would, would rather just kind of run around Laguna some people than go back to hitting creeps. I love uh, this I like the build. build. I, exactly. It's like you get behind, you have a tough early game. Just go for all of these value items. Everything in his inventory, great for stats, survivability. Now he's nice and beefy, able to farm in the jungle. Bane sets up for him, and they've got a slam dunk. Sam H gets a kill. He is going to pay with his life, and it's a big rotation, though, from Clutch Gamers. They move their entire team mid to react, and the trade is still one for one as the Radiant Kind of split around a little bit. Tim's up top and Tiny still down bottom. Was farming and now. No, they saw the invis uh, Tidehunter. So they're going to move forward here, but it's unlikely to get any sort of a kill. And the Radiant get the tower bottom and, and still get out. So they have a painful experience here for old CG. Goal has a sentry ward down still though might get caught and he does raven pops him has too much damage to the combo skylark uses the ravage for this he really wants it 10 seconds to the shadow blade raven might be able to still survive here a lot of reinforced clutch gamers but raven oh the cut through lena didn't the see it coming line. he does not have a tp but he's got the invisibility no dust they miss the stun wow Sweet raven will live that was a sick cut through, man. That was clutch. In that situation, just get that perfect tree, walk your way out. Nicely done by Raven. Big and that's stuff. all space while Armel takes mid. That is true. That is serious space created. Yeah. Infest gank, invis rune. Okay, he takes a ravage, dude. Yeah, that is a solo <laughs> ravage and no kill. Ooh. Dyer's tower is under attack. Oh, we get the uh, hot-headed offlinger here once again with Skylark with the uh, helm and the hood. Can't even breathe under that thing. All under a flood mask. Suffocating in there, I'm sure. Joel caught, bursted down. You know, I, I hear bursted a lot. It's not really a word. Bursted. I mean, technically it is, but really you, you just say burst. Why why is it bursted? Is it like ca cast is like that? You don't, yeah, you exactly. don't ever say, I casted a lot of games. Cast is the, the present, future. Exactly. Past, you're, you're, the you're, you're bursted a lot of games. That's basically what you're saying every time. Huh. I can't, I can't have it down. anymore, Andrew. Gets bursted. Gets burst down. Yeah, I guess you're, is that true? I'm going to Google. Yeah. I'm going to verify. Okay. Check the check the googly. I mean, I'm sure it's oh. like maybe it's like technically a word, but it definitely doesn't sound correct. 
No, it's not quite. The life stealer mid lane. They've got the setup, but it's not enough for a kill. Now Afro Moosh comes in, but they get the stun. That's a Nyx Carapace. Laguna down. They're just outnumbered. This is most of Clutch Gamers. Now all of them rotating as the tide comes in. Astral scouts things out a little bit. And they're going to stick around, though. They don't have quite the damage yet on Lena. Hasn't taken the talent or anything. Well, Nyx is going to be up before this tower falls for sure. Not great sieging power on clutch gamers. They can definitely stick around and still try to take a fight. They have the Ravage. Find an opening. Radiant actually going to play this a little bit defensive. Gonna head back to the well, hit the shop. Look at their vision right now on the Radiant, though. Nice line of wards. And so they, they're aware that they're all inside their jungle just based on the vision that they have on the north side of the map. And uh, they actually see the Dire scouting Roche. Tiny pings it because they send the catapult in. They're like, okay, they think we're in Roche, so that means they don't have vision here on this part of the map because they would know that we went up here. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. Well, you can often tell a lot about like what the other team might see based on like how they make moves like that with that catapult. Ductive reasoning, Trent. Well done. Mm. Top though, the infest bomb, they jump on the shadow fiend. They're gonna force staff back, but will it be enough to survive? Bane with a fiend script sets up for a stun, it'll be another one. Hand it over to Lena. We get the Armel. shadow fiend here, it looks like Armel keep the home. LSA's there, it's a double for Ajit. Very nice. Tried one of the sneakier spots as Afrobush went for the more standard one over in the corner there. All the while mid lane, Skylark's just farming. It's kind of an odd game. You know, even though TNC are getting picked off, it still feels like they're kind of in control of the game at large. You know, they've tossed away a lot of that net worth lead they accumulated, but still not behind by any stretch. You know, I guess we'll double check experience. Yeah, kind of zeroed out. Yeah, I don't know. Raven's kind of owning with the 6-1-0. And he's about to come top again. I feel like yeah. he's the, the main problem causer here. Oh my. Right as the Sand King comes in and interrupts that combo. Nice. He sacrificial he supports, King. dude. Bane makes the plays top to try and save SF. Doesn't work out. This time the SK does save his carry. And so none of our initiation's quite working out, and I, I guess we're just not getting those objectives complete now at this point, because everyone's little plans aren't quite working. Dire do with the catapult inside the pit, so they know what's going on in terms of the old Roche. 14 to 14. But a 4k net worth lead for the Radiant. That is one thing consistently, TNC is a lot less globby borrow the word from you, Trent. Mm. Clutch gamers just seem a lot more clumped up. TNC are a lot more comfortable just splitting up the map, yeah, making fine. sure they're all getting their farm. And that's allowed them to play a little bit more loose with their style. Maybe have a couple of deaths that weren't 100% necessary, but overall, they're getting a lot more. And Raven been to a BKB coming up next. And Good Lena has the plus zone now. So this is the when things should kick into play now for the dire side, though. As, uh, oh, just needs to unlock that little energy booster here, but she's going to use the shrine first. Smart. Okay, so uh, this is where Ajit should take over the net worth chart, honestly. Uh, if she just, like, starts getting around the map, if he doesn't die. Now, mind you, he is to be dodging a Shadow Blade Tiny and a Nyx Assassin. Uh, one thing about Nyx is obviously with the recent... I say recent, but... Yeah, the change to where you're able to carapace and vendetta that's really bad news for lena this is a hero that just wants to spam 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 non-stop very easy to predict uh so you get a free initiation every single time so they seem to have a good idea as to where the uh, the rating team are i mean just by the fact there's a shadow beam here they likely know there's some backup because he doesn't really have great mobility items just the hurricane fight so they head into the pit they have the protection of the ravage on top of it right now and afro which is trying to find a good place to 
hide himself for a potential epicenter play. Titan, the king of the Roche pit, able to delay this very effectively, opens up space for Armel to get that tier two in the bottom lane, and ultimately does repel them from Roche, gets a sleep on the Rubik. Yeah, not Roche working out on. so far for clutch gamers. They just lose a tower for nothing. Yeah, they, they just can't kill Roche fast enough. He's still reasonably healthy. They've got vision in the pit on on the life stealer, but yeah, as you said, it's just it's not quite that fast because Ajit doesn't want to go in the pit. He can't afford to. He's not willing to risk his bloodstone for a Roche fight where he's stuck inside that confined zone. He'd rather uh, go for a smoke. Yeah, that's the opportunity cost, not getting those mobility items like the Shadow Blade or Hurricane Pike or even just staff. So if he's committed, he's committed. And yeah, you can use Yules to kind of reset, but when you come back down, there's going to be a Tiny waiting for you or a Nyx Assassin stun. They're back in. They don't have a sword. sentry. There's actually no detection in the pit right now. Am I crazy? They have dust, that which they can pop before Roche goes down, but uh, Courier's is... coming with the sentries now. Bolt and another Elder Titan stomp slows them down. They've got Aphromouche in a spot, able to get vision, kind of counter initiate, but still so risky. Bane is not here, however. Rotated bottom, kind of an odd spot for Cuckoo to be. I guess he can TP back pretty quickly. They can get constant vision of the Roche with this Astral Spirit. Tim's gives it to him. Roche now down to about a thousand HP. It's they so want to go. go. It's got to be quick, but they're going to do it. They grab the Life Stealer. Beats oh, to start things off. They snatch the Aegis as Raven picks it up. Dyer still get the bonus gold, but CG, they are on the defensive. Sand King and Rubik both get picked. And on the other side, Skylark in some trouble, not able to use a Ravage that he's happy with, and instead opts to save it. Now the Nightmare sets up. The whole cavalry will arrive, and this should be the end of the Tide Hunter. Lena on the high ground, gets a stun on three for a second. Almost looked like a Ravage could have set up a kill for her, but that won't happen either, and it ends up being four for nil, still with the Aegis in tow. A big play for TNC. Jeez, that was so sick. Like, the way they just had the constant vision, it was a, a very, very, very greedy play from the Dire. But, I mean, there was a chance because the way that TNC played it, if they failed, like, kind of that execution, because they were waiting for the perfect moment where it's like, we're going to go in, we're going to snipe the Aegis, we're going to kill the Life Stealer before he can pick it up. Whereas, theoretically, they could have tried to initiate earlier, just forced out the Ravage with a couple of heroes or something, and then just kept the fight going. But uh, they went with the flawless execution, got it done. And uh, that, that's just brutal for Clutch Gamers. They really wanted that Aegis and then should try and play around it with the uh, the Ravage afterward. KB up on the Tiny and Shadow Fiend, what does he have next? Uh, he has a BKB now and a Butterfly queued up. Big items, not that far. Even the Elder Titan, four staff, Yule Scepter. That's pretty good. E. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. Even Bane is almost at like 4,400 gold. This is crazy. Is a Aetherlin's done. Cuckoo tends to be a bit more firm than your average position five, though. But I don't feel like he pulls much away from his allies in doing so. In that sense, he's actually one of the better position fives, which is surprising considering he's like just started playing the role. But maybe yeah. a little bit of his greediness from you know core roles taking like over a he, bit. He soaks up that extra farm that you don't even realize was there. Okay. No, uh, we'll see the bane get caught. Nice setup from the. Well, oh, more important, back to the racks. They are raging here. And Armel is still going to work. Remember that Aegis is still on the Tiny Skylark. Is invis this time. Has a gem as well. So he can track down this Tiny, but there's no friends. He can't do it. They had to commit the uh, Laguna to finish off Bane. Almost made it away with a nice nightmare play. Served as an okay distraction, but in the end, TNC. Save it for another time. Money to burn. Tough game at this point for the dire side. Uh, how do they want to fight? Uh, I guess like Ravage and then a follow up from the Lena and the Life Stealer. We haven't seen the hero damage really coming out so far from Life Stealer, but he does have it. The Deso, the Armlet, now the Sanj, but Raven is going to hop on top of him. Half his HP now gone. Rage forced out here. Sanking, not going to follow up. A lot of pressure on Skylark right now. Yeah. I understand why he went for the pipe this game, but probably. 
spreading it just a little bit. Blink Dagger on Tide before 30 minutes gives you so many options. Yeah, but I don't know if his team's ready to fight, are they? Like, Lena's... She's getting there, just now. I think they could have been, though. You know, I mean, you can use Infest Ganks. Lifestealer goes Deso to fight, not to farm. Yeah. I don't know if the Tide Blink would be the problem, though. I feel like it's just not synced up, and they're just getting outplayed by TNC. Elder Titan is just brutal. Well, that's He's... for sure. He just scouts you out every single time. Well, it's, it's like we said the other day. It's, it's you know, kind of to reference our Battle Cup game. It gives you something to play around. And right now, the Tide is just this kind of reactionary, like, hey, if their group up is five, I'm going to use Ravage, where if you have, have the Blink Dagger, it gives you a reason to smoke, something to fight behind. And it feels like that's what CG has been lacking. So it's not just the Blink Dagger. The bigger problem is that execution like you're talking about, but... Right now, they don't have something that's easy to fight behind. You know, Sand King also has been playing counter-initiate. Remember the Roche fight? He's just sitting here, hiding in the trees, waiting to counter-initiate. They need someone to play that front line and start things off. Or else it's just going to be the Nyx Assassin or the Elder Titan. And if that's the case, then you've kind of already lost the fight. Well, at least they get a Tier 1. <laughs> something going their way. Yep. They're dodging the fight of the Aegis. That's going to be expiring in five seconds here. So Raven's just kind of waiting out the regen. That's yeah. why he's not going home. No, not too bad for Clutch, honestly. They also still have their gem. They still have all their barracks. So being able to wait out Aegis is victory. A danger zone. Thought about going to the secret shop. Good thing it didn't. Image was nearby. Now it's going to make the journey. They're going to guard it travel they'll gem on tide and they spot the next points back it's image quick on that precious courier flying back and forth looking juicy but find it so they hold on once more now, TNC though I, I think they're okay to keep farming at the moment you look at the gold graph and they definitely stopped the bleeding. It's plateaued at about a 9-10k net worth lead, but still some core items to be farmed up. You know, the Shadow Fiend not quite done with the Butterfly. Tiny, now just going to go into Silver Edge. Oh, they might get a kill here. Finally get another Bloodstone charge. Ash has been doing very well. I mean, no surprise. Says extremely good player. Has been for a long time, but he's been dodging out a lot of these fights. Uh, he went for the uh, the greedy build, you could say, in terms of like getting the bots next, but it just fits this game because they're looking to dodge out right now. And he needs a VKB before he can really fight. Plus, he's trying to keep his team's high ground safe. Yeah. It's always tempting on Lena to try to go in for those kills, but it's really important to maintain those Bloodstone charges so you can keep farming. Now that he has the Shadow Blade, he can get a little bit more involved. I think he's struck that balance. 9, 3, and 4. Relatively conservative since he got the Bloodstone, but we've still seen him involved in fights. Oh, but yeah. now the Butterfly. They yeah. don't have a great answer to this right now. And that's still with a 10 second BKB on the Shadow Fiend. That is terrifying. Silver Edge done for our Tiny as well. Exactly. Even though it feels like, well, TNC are struggling to break high ground, I think they're not forcing it because they feel exactly what you just said. We've got a really scary arsenal now with this 10 second magic community. Nyx Assassin stops the smoke. Sam H blinks back in time. Fast fingers there. Yeah, and even this situation. So this will be an interesting fight to watch if they actually commit to bottom. We'll see how uh, Tim's can. I don't even think they can. They don't want to. Like, that's the power of Elder Titan, honestly. Like, it's so hard to just come and posture and use this power of the Lena in terms of sieging the tower. And this is why the Elder Titan is such a good last pick when you can kind of spot a game like that. They don't really have the best heroes to just kind of quickly assassinate the ET without being directly underneath a BKB Shadow Fiend and stuff like that, you know? Or they, they don't really have... I guess they do have the pickoff potential if they could find the ET, but Tim's not getting caught out too often just that one up top but he wasn't uh, you know they went to any sort of a spot where they could actually punish based on that so uh we're scanning out the dire or the uh the rush pit once again here from the dire thanks to the helm of skylark sam h also doing some scouting potential skirmish could break out 
Tide holding the gem. Again, best in sight of the Sand King. Roche spawns right now. It's a very early respawn. Neither team has scouted it out yet. Pretty rare to see Roche come back right on the dot like that. So not a surprise that both teams are a little cynical about the potential. In rune snagged by Sam H. Dagger up on Skylark now. And we're gonna so, smoke with that with an infest here. And Gravage. Oh, they actually chose not. Do they not have a smoke? Oh, they were staying like they were gonna smoke. And yeah, now they're they just running. One. They just don't have one. So, Radiant Heroes all up top. Dire seem to have a decent idea of what they're up to. There is some vision in this area, so if they wander in there, they'll know. But likewise, Tim's is pinging saying, yo, they are all in here. Up with them, right? They will rendezvous. The Astral scouts out Roche. Now aware that the big boy's back. There's Radiant the smoke. nails the scan. Visible lean on the front they're, line. They're doing the long wraparound. Cuckoo draws the line. The old hairpin. Wow. This is going to be the big wrap. Remember, Lena does have a BKB. 10 seconds ready to go. So both sides with a lot to unload. Tiny has that gem. Oh, that Lena. Oh, Lena. They jump on odd gym, but the Ravage is there to counter initiate. BKBs come out and they trade. Buyback immediately from both. Decent epicenter, but the Requiem flies. And the Earth Splitter from Tim's is just too much. Lena does not buy back, it's just Sam H. They're gonna They're catch gonna the Rubik the too. With the buyback, it's not much of a net worth gain, but of course they want to secure Roshan and now a godlike streak for Raven. So it does work out very well for TNC. It looked like a great Ravage, but Raven was right there with the BKB, so he was able to finish off the Lena. Yeah, he was so fast on the BKB. Armel didn't get it in time, but uh, Raven did. So he's able to keep uh, pumping some damage in during that Ravage stun. And Armel, not enough on him in terms of focus. So he got his BKB off after the ultimate to help prevent some more damage. And life was easy. But man, Raven, it's just, he's so good on this tiny. Every game we see him on it, man. Yeah, he knows how to, he knows the limits of the hero. How do you just utilize the burst? Nightmare set up onto Lifestealer, Nyx. We'll have the follow-up stun. He does not have rage for a few more seconds, but four staff from his friend will help him out. Break, Tiny jumps in, the toss-up, Infest. Wow, Dave's he got the, the Infest steals. like mid... Wait, what? Did he just tree? He Dire. just treed that courier. Yep, he did. He sure did. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Raven. Extra bonus gold there. They might not have been counting on. Hims. Oh, they what's go for the, Sam, H. Uh... Sam H went for the health talent, man. Where's where's my move speed, dude? I love super speed Nyx. He doesn't have the Yule Scepter, but he's got the other Wind Lace. And if you get... You just get this drums, the Yules, the move speed talent. Oh, it's so much fun. But he wants that survivability. What a, a lot good of player. Burst damage this How game. dare he? Yeah, no, it's definitely good. It, it's anytime there's Ravage or Chrono or these big ultimates that you're pretty much guaranteed to get caught into some like Nyx, you want that health talent. But I just like seeing him zoom around everywhere. Blood golems. It just running around the jungle. Another kind of stalemate here. TNC still maintaining this elite, but feels like it's hard for them to really pressure the high ground. Shadow Fiend still plenty of time on the Aegis, is going for a Satanic. Actually really close to it. Yeah, I think it's just a kind of a symptom of the, uh, the current patches. Where, uh, I, I mean, there's also, most people draft really good high ground these days. I mean, both of these teams have good high ground. The Radiant one, I'd say, is better just because Elder Titan's ownage, but... Uh, you're dealing against Sanking, you're dealing against Tidehunter, so you really need every single piece ready before you want to go high ground. Uh, and that includes your BKBs. So, 70 second cooldown means when you win the fight with the BKB, you have to wait another 70 seconds before you really want to go high ground if they buy back. So, we have to wait out buyback cooldowns every single time. 
Uh, and right now, the Dire Side still has it up on Tide. Uh, and then it's just cost on the other two heroes that are missing it for the Dire, so... Game's uh, taking a bit longer. A nice pickoff on Bane, you know, bits here and there. Pick me up. Thinking about a play, TNC all grouped up here. They're still trying to find that big fight for Lena. You know, Ajit, he has the 10 second BKB. They just, they got to get that big Ravage off where they, uh, they catch the Tiny or the SF without the, uh, the BKB. And it looked like that was the moment mid when Armel didn't get it off in time, but just because Raven was able to disrupt that. They're just going to leave, okay? Is there. Yol in the danger zone. Dagger, force staff, or anything. <laughs> they find him. He is done. Oh, God. They literally just pinged on top of him, too. Yeah. He had his observer ward there, so he's able to uh, sneak his way out. And they're going to camp mid. Hope that someone shows up to push this out. But uh, drawings there from Yol. He has correctly said what they are up to. So they're going to do the counterplay in the top. Push there and uh, try and get something done before they're forced to TV back and defend the high ground. Pretty good movements right now. Clutch gamers. Good yeah. discipline to keep pressuring. All these tier 2s still alive, though. They have double catapults coming top, though, so that will be quite helpful. Pretty nice. We'll see what TNC do in terms of forcing a decision. Buyback status, some still available. Skylark jumps forward. No Ravage yet, though. So Aegis still ready for another 30 seconds. Some pressure on RML to, to get up in there. Try and make use of it, and that's why he's going as fast as he can. Has to say Tanix. See if uh, Clutch can time out this Aegis properly. Well, now, now see if, being uh, a little more conservative with the positioning. They yeah. still have Siege Creeps. He goes back in for the high ground. It, it's risky if they've got a timer on this. They know. Well, now they're doing a lot of burst Three, damage. Three, two, one. Oh, they don't chase. Okay, there's the regen rune, so he still gets a reset. Still has BKB, everything else. Now the real fight can begin. They've broken down the tier three, so it's exposed. Makes things a lot easier, but still respecting the power of that Tide Hunter. With the BKBs, they don't want to pop them too early and they don't want to be mass ravaged. That they will just turn on the shrine. Both teams dropping scans in very similar areas. The idea of where the opposition can be. Big can grab, though. Great. Oh, what? Smoke. He gets knocked down to the low ground. That's with his force staff. I can't believe he got that off in time. That is crazy. Now, stuck from Nyx. They're going to go on the Time Hunter. Skylark cannot ravage. They get Sam H in exchange, but without ravage, BKBs fly and TNC start to take control. Bane barely alive thanks to the Nightmare, and Lifestealer gets turned on. Yol will finish him off. There has been a buyback from the Tide Hunter. He's in the fray. Both supports on the Radiant down. TNC kind of on the defensive, but they've already done a lot this fight. Stun from the Sand King on the back. There's the Ravage from Skylark. Connects on all three, but oh, Tiny is forced off hill though. Eat some cheese. Looks like he'll be okay. Free branch. Not happening. That was like the Matrix, dude. <laughs> The slow-moving bullet through the air, and he just sidesteps it. Yep. Uh, Yule oh, is there. He got him. First footer now. Lena with the four staff. Oh, they needed a little more. 40 HP. I'll take your tribute. Yeah, Zeus ult now. Stun onto the Sand King. The has both gems. Thank you very much. Take one of those back. And get the courier or someone else to grab the other one. Victory gems here on the Elder Titan. So another big team fight again goes the way of TNC. Pretty long and spread out. Really should have been a kill on the Lena. So close in the end. She does Shadow Blade back up to the high ground though. Tim's putting kind of work careful. in that fight Raven too. Almost grabs the tide. 
who bought back there? Tidehunter? Uh, during our last fight, the uh, I think it was nobody, was it? Oh, it was, it was Tide. Tide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right, because then he came back in for the Ravage, but they didn't get anything out of it. So, what do we got now? 8 second BKB on the SF, and 7 seconds for the Tiny. We're just looking for a Rax here. There is a Glyph, but a great window where the Saint King does not want to buy back. Though, still down for another few seconds. Astral Spirit scouting things, stealing some damage. For the Stomp, connects on the Rubik. Not a bad way to set up a fight like this. They almost get the melee barracks. Raven goes in, Yol brought down as Cuckoo finishes him off with the Brain Sap. BKB used by the Tiny and the bottom barracks, finished off by the Shadow Fiend. Now the rotation mid with Rubik down. It is still a 5v4, there's no buyback on the Rubik. Short there's gold, a... not timer. There's no BKB though on the Tiny, so he's a very nice target for them. They're looking for the epicenter play, and Aftermath's coming in now. Jumps in, Sam H survives with the Eon Disc, and Armel pops the BKB, starts to turn Kuku on the back line with a nice feed script. Lifesteal are not able to isolate him. Kuku lives, and this looks like it could be the end here, Trent Pax. Two down without buyback. Saint King has already used his, and he's down. Mid lane about to be destroyed, and this looks like it's it. TNC take game one, as Clutch Gamers call it. Again, they make them work for it, but TNC just get a little bit more out of all those exchanges. Yeah, even when it was only like a 2k lead, it just felt like TNC were completely in control of this one. I don't know. Delina never really came online. I'm curious to see what